been looking at the story of the great debate about evolution between Thomas Huxley and Samuel Wilberforce here in Oxford in 1860. Over the years after the great debate, a myth grew up around it, the myth that Huxley had made a fool of Wilberforce. Christopher Hitchens describes it as a tipping point in the conflict. Richard Dawkins arranged for this monument to be put up outside the Natural History Museum in Oxford. But at the time, who thought they'd won the debate? In a way, both sides came away from the debate thinking that they had won. Huxley and Hooker wrote these tremendously hyperbolic letters to Darwin that Darwin loved reading as he was off getting his water cure in Malvern. And they both claimed that, that they had won, that they'd won the debate, they'd won the day. Um, and, but meanwhile, uh, Wilberforce wrote in his diary that he'd clearly won as well. And, and then there were others who felt that neither side had won, that it was a fairly you know, close debate. Um, it seems like there, there were opinions to support any winner, any loser, a draw. There isn't really consensus over who won uh, when you actually look at the letters uh, between the main participants, when you look at the uh, newspaper reports uh, and, and all the documents. It, it just doesn't support a, any clear winner. The myth didn't grow by accident. It was carefully cultivated by Huxley. I think this, this has something to do with why the, the subsequent commentary on the debate suggests that, that Huxley had won, because he was very careful to control the memory of the debate itself. Reginald Wilberforce published a Life and Letters study of his father, Samuel Wilberforce, and he mentions uh, the debate very briefly, um, but, but it suggests that Wilberforce won the debate, and, and in the book, um, Reginald Wilberforce uh, says that Huxley's response is to the effect that um, he said that he would rather be related to an ape than a bishop. And Huxley was, also ca was always careful to suggest that wasn't quite what he had said. He said he'd rather be related to an ape than a man who would use his intellectual abilities to obscure the truth. And so he was always very careful to make sure that that was corrected. And Reginald Wilberforce published uh, in, in um, the, the next edition an erratum that that uh, suggested that Huxley said uh, something slightly different. Um, but, but that was the sort of thing that was important for Huxley to, to sort of control the memory of the debate. It's, it's true that um, Huxley and the scientific naturalists, um, they, were, they were using the memory of the debate as a way to justify their, their sort of agenda to, to separate science from religion. And, and, and really the whole purpose behind um, doing that was, was basically to to remove the authority of religion that seemed to be infecting science at the time, and that was a major, a major goal of Huxley and his friends. Um, they formed uh, the X Club. Uh, Herbert Spencer was also a member, uh, as well as Huxley and uh, and several other scientific naturalists at the time. And they sort of they tried to engage in in certain activities that would uh, present a, a naturalistic science in a in a very good light, with a religiously motivated science in a, in a very negative light. Huxley was an early example of a spin doctor, and he was very good at it. In the years after 1860, he cultivated the myth of his victory over Wilberforce as a weapon in his personal crusade to free science from the influence of religion. Next time, we'll look at how the myth grew 